So today I'm joined here with uh, Mr. Mark Arvizo. Let me tell you a little bit about Mark before we get started. Mark uh, started with us a couple of months ago on the final expense telesales side, uh, went through uh, some initial training. We'll talk more about that if you're new to uh, insurance sales success, how that works with our agency, and uh, started producing uh, part-time in the last couple of weeks has written somewhere around 4,000, give or take an annual premium. That's very good considering a part-time schedule. And what we're going to be doing is kind of just uh, uh, looking into what it's like to be a new agent, uh, selling final expense, uh, some of the ups and the downs of the business, what the experience has been like. Uh, the idea behind this is to, again, give you some honest insight to what it's like to do this for a living, uh, to make uh, the idea of this business to sell insurance over the phone from home, specifically in the final expense section of reality. And uh, kind of give you the tools that if you're interested in doing this yourself, whether with the Ford Insurance Group or another agency, just an idea of what it takes to be successful. So with that said, Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Dave. How are you? Hey, fantastic. Uh, Mark, it's a pleasure to have you on. And, and let me just uh, thank you uh, for taking some time here to have a little conversation with us. Of course, no problem at all. Why don't we start from the top? So uh, tell us why you got into the insurance business and ultimately joined the Ford Insurance Group. Sure. Yeah. So um, it was actually my boss. I was doing personal training uh, right before I got into insurance, much like you, Dave. And my boss, we had always been driven, like wanted to be successful in whatever we did. Uh, we knew it wasn't going to be in corporate America. We had found that much out at the point. And so we knew it was going to be in sales. We just didn't know the vehicle. And so one day he came into work and was extremely convicted about the insurance business. I was about to get into real estate. And uh, immediately when I heard about it, I was just like, that sounds boring. It sounds horrible. <laughs> like, you know, I feel like insurance just has that stigma, right? Where it's like, nobody wants to talk about it. You know, you think insurance, there's nothing right. really exciting about it. And right. so started to dive into the business and saw how lucrative it could be. Um, and immediately I was like, wow, this is, this is the golden opportunity. And so from there, um, got into a captive agency with uh, Northwestern Mutual, actually. So dove right into that, um, did all my training, got my um, Series 6, Series 7, and all that stuff, uh, but quickly kind of saw that it was going to be a very limiting career in terms of insurance. So like, uh, you know, doing the captive side where I'm just pushing Northwestern product and just the whole sales process, as well as how we generated leads, I kind of had a problem with. Um, from there, moved out of that company very quickly into an MLM uh, where I was uh, extremely disappointed. Um, there wasn't really a sales process. I just, you know, it was more about recruiting, which again, nothing, nothing wrong with that, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. And then um, fast forward to right here where uh, I knew what I didn't like, like about the industry and then immediately found, you know, the DeFord Insurance Group and knew exactly that that was what I was looking for. So yeah, here we are. Awesome. So I want to recycle or rewind back a little bit because a lot of, of this group here are aspiring to sell insurance or just about to or maybe brand new. And I think sure. like you had mentioned, so much of this business is about figuring out what not to do, right? Right. Because no, all of exactly. us make mistakes, right? And it's just it's incumbent of being in business. It's coming to yeah. being a human being. And one thing that's true is if we can avoid those mistakes, right, as new agents, right, we, we avoid the costly mishap, sometimes even causing us to fail. So I want to couple, yeah. cover a couple of things here. You mentioned Northwestern, which if you don't know about Northwestern, think uh, New York Life, think Mass Mutual, these kind of mainline big time companies. They're publicly traded. A lot of them are. Or they're just well-known, very well-branded, have this kind of air of professionalism. You said it wasn't a good choice for you. Can you explain for, for your for why for you, you didn't like the Northwestern approach uh, to doing business and insurance? Yeah. So I, I guess there, there's really three main reasons. Like the, the main one that I saw is as an insurance agent, right? You don't have to be pushing one product you can have multiple you can have like a swiss army knife so to speak in terms of carriers right so being on that independent side i just thought saw that there was so much more of an advantage to you know having so many more options that i could offer my client versus you know me just offering northwestern mutual product it's a great product but it's really not for everybody right so my solutions were limited and mm. for me from a sales side i just didn't like that you know ultimately if i couldn't sell them northwestern then we're kind of you know just out of luck and then the second thing I didn't like was how we generated leads. It was much, it was very much a family friends, you know, put your 200 list together, 
and just hound those people down that really aren't interested, but are just giving you the time of day because, you know, you know them and, you know, hound them down for their referrals. And it just felt uncomfortable to me. Um, It wasn't how I wanted to sell. I wanted to sell to prospects. Right. Um, Right. And then it was, it was really just the sales flow. So it just took way too long to me. I like to move with speed. Right. So it's like, we get on the phone, one call closed, boom, we're getting paid. Um, As there it was to, like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So there it was like, we hop on a zoom call, right. We have a fact finder, which is fine. We build some value. Then we get off and then we try to, we bring them on to another meeting where we offer them the solution. They, there's really no sales question, no at like closing questions or anything. If they don't want it, we try to get on another meeting. It's hard enough getting a person on one meeting, right? right. Uh, yeah. Getting them on two or three is damn near impossible. So it was just too slow, too sluggish. And that's what I didn't like about it as well. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And again, it's not that Northwestern is a bad company. hundred percent. Very good company. But the thing is, as an agent, this what, what Mark's describing here is the process of figuring out what you want and what's important to you. Exactly. Again, the, one of the biggest issues with Northwestern, just like Mark said, is the sales cycle is sometimes months. You find a prospect, you have to have multiple meetings, you send an, an, a life app or an annuity app through uh, underwriting, spe- more specifically life. It's very tough. There's a lot of processes. You got to do uh, examinations, take blood, pee in a cup. All of this yeah. can take a long time. And there's still no guarantee you're going to close the deal. Whereas with final yeah. expense, like what Mark mentioned, the unique thing about final expense, it's what we call a one call close. Mark gets on the phone as he'll describes. He does his sales pitch and he gets the deal that day or he never does. And it's nice because at the end of that call, the sale is resolved. It's closed, it's approved, and that's it. And if you're looking for activity and you don't want to get down into the weeds of selling, that's why we like final expense is because it's just much more employable over a vast many of prospects. Um, The other thing that's important too is, guys, when you're looking into selling insurance, there's typically two pathways to get started as far as the product selection. You can be in what's called a captive model, which would I would describe Northwestern. You're married to Northwestern. You do business with Northwestern only. There's no other product selection. That is called captive. You're a product pusher, and, and meaning you just have to be totally beholden to Northwestern. Again, the, like Mark said, the problem with that is that what? Not every gut buddy's good for Northwestern. Uh, their underwriting standards differ from other carriers. So you may be pigeonholing yourself and not getting sales you otherwise could have if you were with other companies. And that's where being an independent broker plays in very, very well. Um, That's what we do at DeFord Insurance Group. We, and this has been how I've always operated personally as an agent. I don't want to be married to a company because companies change. I want to have options for my clients, so I give them the best combination of what's available to them. If somebody's got COPD, I don't want to arbitrarily choose a company that doesn't fully protect my client when one option does. And so as an independent agent, Mark has access right to multiple companies and now is in this position to help his client to the best of his ability with options, no matter how well or not well their health is. And that means more sales. It means you doing a better job and um, all in all, just win-win across the board. Mark, you want to comment on that at all? Uh, no. Well, first of all, like you said in the beginning, I do want to preface that by saying I have nothing against Northwestern. Like it's just not for everybody. And there's so many, you know, different things that you can do in the insurance business. I just knew it wasn't for me. Right. And so that's really all. And you, you just hit the nail on the head. That's, that's exactly, it's exactly what I was looking for. And that's why I ended up going with you. Beautiful. And then and then comment, please, on the MLM, if you don't mind kind of describing <laughs> how you mean by the MLM. Think of the new agent here that may be unfamiliar with this. Like, I thought we're not selling beauty products. Why is there MLM and insurance? Can you comment on that a little bit? Yeah. And like, so I was very new to the game, right? I've been in insurance for six months, seven months. And so I didn't know that a lot of these agencies are MLM setups. You know, I guess inherently the insurance business is sort of an MLM setup, but there's different ways to do it, right? And so this one was heavy, heavy recruiting, basically getting anybody, any anybody, right, to these meetings and seeing if they would sign up. Where I really didn't like it was, so I started to get go to these meetings, very, very rah rah, you know, 
gratitude, get excited, you know. Um, but there was nothing really about the product. Like we weren't learning about the the product, what it is. And we're really just trying to get people to the meetings. And so I asked my recruiter, I was like, where is the sales process? Like, where do I actually sell the product to somebody? And they were like, well, selling is great, but we really need to focus on the recruiting. And that's kind of what turned me off. Uh, and then when they wanted me to get a, a, in a, like a huge policy, like they wanted me to get a policy that was like 800 mm -hmm. monthly premium, you know, just so she could hit her numbers. And then we can help me figure out how to do that later on. Like, don't worry about it. You're going to earn the commission. It'll buy you a couple months. And so it was really off putting. Um, again, I don't have anything against it. It's, it's a way that people become successful in this business, but you know, I just knew that wasn't for me. And I appreciate you sharing that because the vast majority of you probably heard about the insurance business through an MLM and you all have to be very aware of the realities of the culture behind MLM. Now the thing with insurance, so everybody understands insurance is hierarchically speaking, multi-level. You have the carrier at the top. You have what we call national marketing organizations. They contract with IMOs, independent marketing organizations, agencies, and then agents to distribute and sell the product. Okay, and and all businesses are kind of like that. You've got the, you know, CEO management. You got suppliers, right? So there's going to be different hierarchies. Insurance is direct sales, and that's how it's structured here. The thing is that and that that y'all need to be aware of is that if you don't want to get into the recruiting people to recruit other business, because that's essentially what Mark's describing he was in, then you need to start assessing the culture of the company you're joining. What is it that they talk about? Are they spending the predominant amount of their time talking about recruiting other people? Or are they talking predominantly about helping you learn the craft of selling the product? Uh, at DeFord Insurance Group, our sole focus is on teaching you the craft of selling insurance, specifically final expense, but also Medicare, ACA, health insurance, and annuities, but mostly final expense. We don't care if you ever recruit the first person. And what we know, too, is that if you ultimately want to build an agency, there's no better street cred for recruiting people than actually having experience, right? So in our world, what comes first is getting you good at selling insurance successfully, not recruiting. We see that as more of a distraction. Um, and I, in some sense, it's actually a bad thing because if you recruit people in this business who are now putting their effort, their, their career in your hands, and you don't really know anything, <laughs> uh, that's problematic, disastrous potentially, right? So um, for those of you looking at agencies, or even if you're part of one, if, if they're not talking about training you and focusing on developing you to a producer, like you need to think twice because that's what matters most. Um, if they're showing you their Ferraris and their Rolexes and their planes and stacks of cash, that's probably a ploy to recruit you to recruit others. Okay. Like I don't do any of that crap because it's a turnoff to me. Um, what I care about instead is what can I do for you to help you learn this business? Right. So keep it, um, keep it, uh, Keep that in mind. So, okay. So you you wound up at the Ford Insurance Group, presumably because you like what we just described, selling, teaching you the craft of, of the business. You got in the final expense, but you chose, you had the option with us. You can either sell face-to-face -face or you can sell over the phone. Mark, describe why you chose telesales and what you found to be the benefits of telesales for final expense. Uh, well, it was really my specific situation right now. I just had a baby. So she just turned a month today. And so just being able to, I guess, um, be, be at home and, you know, if, if we need anything, I could go help was, was definitely a deciding factor. But I had done some telesales right before I, I got into this with the per personal training side. And so I didn't really know that there was a sales process on the phone. And I just figured, I, I think I'm kind of good at this and would love to be able to do that. It just feels like the ultimate leverage, you know, being able to make money from home. So I just wanted to dive into that. I'm also in Hawaii and I heard that uh, face to face isn't really the best place here or regardless for selling final expense. Uh, so that's kind of what made me go into the telesales side. And, and what have you discovered about being the pros and the cons of telesales? Because for some people, it's great. Others, it's not. So, for instance, I had this app last week. Um, just we got through the pitch. So like super easy, um, was excited about it. Uh, but we got to the point with prosperity where we do like the confirmation code, right? Like I send them the SMS, the text message, and then they read the confirmation back to me. Um, he wasn't very technologically literate, right? And so he was like, man, like my phone is blinking. I can't see it and gave up. 
right? And I was so pissed because it was so easy, you know, and yeah, something like yeah. an SMS code ruined that sale. Hopefully I can get back on the phone with them. Um, but it's things like that. It, what I've really noticed, it's the just, you know, the, the communication and having them do things over the phone and, right. and staying with the whole process. It, it's easy for them to kind of cop out if, uh, if they run into some problems. Because they could just and hang up guess, the phone, right? I mean, realistically, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%, 100%. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that's, you said it, just the ease of hanging up the phone on somebody. So I think your margin for error is a lot less over the phone versus, you know, being at their door. That's, right. that's what I would say. Now, what about pros of telesales? Oh man. Um, you're, you're at home, <laughs> like you're at home, you know, doing work. Uh, what I like about it, like, because it can be hard, right? Here in the phone dial, and if you know somebody gets off the phone, you you lose a deal, or you felt like you did. Um, what I like about it is I can just step away for a second, you know, step away, get my mind off of things for about 10, 15 minutes, and then come back and hammer it again. Like I really like that, and uh, you know, versus me being out in the field, like you know, maybe I could go back to my car and stuff, but really, if I'm at home, I can just settle back down and then get back after it. That's what I like. One one of the things I've seen that's hardest for new telesales agents is to develop a routine. You know, when you go into an office and you have a boss, you're kind of expected to show up, stay on task, et cetera. But one of the, I guess, hidden difficulties of working from home is working from home. You know, you've got the demands of your spouse, of other things you can do. You're at home, so it's not the same like work environment. How do you handle your schedule and your kind of overall demeanor, getting the job done without being pulled away from distractions. Yeah, to be honest, it's been very hard lately. Like for instance, last week, um, you know, my my wife was very, very stressed. Like she's been taking care of the baby a lot during the day, during the night as well. And so she had just, she was spent. And so like last week, I guess it's a pro and a con, but like, I, I just stepped away. You know, I was like, right. I need, I just need to be there for my daughter right now. And so I really focused on just taking care of her and giving my wife a break. And so there's a lot of value in that. But really, it's been kind of all over the place. Like, you know, my baby doesn't really allow for a set regimented schedule. And so it's really yeah, about they're, locking they're in. They're kind of like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Unbelievable. No, but um, but yeah, so it's really just when, I, when I'm about to dial, whether it's for two to four hours or whatever, um, just really locking in. And um, yeah. for me, just reminding myself that's just to not panic, you know, because my time is so right. limited. Right. Uh, it's okay. Just keep dialing, move on to the next lead. And somebody's going to pick up the phone. You're going to get a presentation off and just stick to the numbers. That's it. Right. hundred percent. So let's, let's shift gears. You started with us. And again, one of the things we do at the Ford insurance group that is unlike anything, what you'll see in the business is a heavy copious amount of one-on-one -on -one mentorship and training. Can you kind of describe that process of what it was like to work with us specifically, Chris, and how that benefited you learning the telesales? process? Yeah, well, Chris was one of those guys that just tells it to you straight, you know, he's not going to sugarcoat anything. And that, that's what I liked. That's what I kind of prefer when I'm being trained. I just want to told like it is. And so he, he really laid out this industry like, man, because I was like, I have a few thousand to, you know, spend towards leads and, and whatnot. He was like, dude, you're going to need more than that. Like, you, you don't understand you can you can waste money quick in this business. And so from there, just prefacing it like, hey, this isn't a joke. You know, I don't want to see you like fail and fall flat on your face. Um, prefacing it that way and then just going forward with real true advice in terms of like how to sell. It was really crafted around, you know, sales and handling objections. That was the main training that I wanted. Right. And he gave it to me and it was super, super helpful because I could use it in real time. I'd get on a phone call with him. We go over some objections and then start dialing, you know? So I, f I just found that super effective. How, how do you think, because most agents don't get in, even a phone call when they start. They're just kind of like throw them to the wolves and see what happens. Good luck. And a lot of people yeah. fail out of the business because of that. I mean, just the best that you can, how would you see yourself operating this business without that vital support that you got? Do you think you run into a lot more problems, a lot more frustrations? Definitely a lot more frustrations because there was so much unknown and, uh, that's a lot of it in this business for me personally was the fear of the unknown. It's like, okay, am I really about to drop a thousand on this week in leads and not really know anything? He just really gave me the confidence. I would say whether it was like him teaching me a lot 
or anything. It was just the confidence to go out there and start dialing. You know, I think that was the most yeah. important thing. Yeah. And that, and you know, I've been doing this for geez, since 2013 and I've exclusively trained my agents up till really December. And, um, I made a decision in, in an effort to grow the Ford insurance group to bring on trainers and to really kind of take the market share of those people who value training. Uh, I want people to know us for the value and quality of training that we provide and the kind of connections we have one-on-one -on -one with our agents. And I can tell you this, like the, the people we have now, Tim, Chris, David, and then Joe, who are responsible for training our agents, they the a value that they've provided versus what I did 10x e easily. Like it's it's it, we have so many more successful agents now because of that one on one mentorship they get twice a day when they first start rehearsing the scripts, going through the process. I, I just can't stress enough to you new agents, and that's the point. Um, mentorship makes such a difference. I've seen both sides of it running in my agency and without it, and we have so many more people successful now because of it. And, and it's, I think if anything, telesales, you really need to have it uh, with telesales. You don't see them physically, the prospects, you, they can hang up on you in a heartbeat. Their finger is just a few inches away from the end button. And what you say and how you say it matters so much. If you want to get to the end of that call to close them. And there's so much that can go wrong and there's so much you just don't know until you've been told and taught and instructed and developed on it. And training is so vital for telesales. I don't think I could ever go back to building a team without it uh, on that one-on-one -on -one basis. So, so thanks for sharing that. So let's talk about the realities of the business of, of final expense telesales. So you went through our training, you started selling, you've had a couple of good weeks, the last couple of weeks. And granted, you're on a part-time basis, right? Because you've had Correct. your kid, you're helping your wife out as you should. And there's a lot of demands going on. Um, kind of walk us through when, you know, you are selling part-time, um, what a typical day looks like. What are you doing to get the sale? Like, like just take us through kind of a typical day of what you've experienced. Sure. Um, Honestly, like the, the first two days that pop up in my head, are, uh, unfortunately, are the bad days. I've had two really <laughs> bad days uh, where like I, I was dialing all day and had two apps that I was going to write and they fell through. Um, one got spooked by the social, um, another, you know, technical difficulties. And it's, it can just it just makes me neurotic. I'm the type that just wants to dive back into, you know, what it is that I did and what went wrong, which obviously is a part of our craft. We need to do it. Um, but it just, it can eat you up, you know, and then just, but you also need the ability to have a quick memory and move on and, and keep dialing. So, um, some days are going to be like that, a hundred percent is just inevitable. And then other days, um, you know, it's just locked in you're feeling good about the pitch. Uh, you know, you know that you're delivering the energy over the phone and they just go, well, I think the main thing for me is um, keeping the mindset of just doing the same thing every day. You know, this business really rewards people that just stick in it long enough to experience the success, especially on the telltale side. Um, you really just got to keep the activity up in the beginning uh, and just work on your craft every day. And, and the, really the only way for me personally uh, was listening to those sales calls, like the real action sales calls. I mean, Dave, those are, those really saved me. I think that was the best training I've oh, had oh, so far. Let's so, so tell the audience what that is. I think it's profoundly impactful. Oh my you gosh. can just describe that please. Really important. It's a, yeah. Yeah. It's exactly like, cause I've had sales jobs before and it's exactly what I wanted from every single sales job. Like the training is great and we can role play and go over the pitch as much as we want, but really the only place I'm going to learn is actually doing it. And then being able to see people do it like that, that was, that was a dream for me. And so it's basically just an Excel sheet that you put together of, of sales calls where you and the team like deep, deep dive into every single part of the pitch, what they did, right. What we could have done differently, very, very detailed. And so me, you know, before getting into it and dialing, it, it, it's like, I ran through the mistakes, but I let other people do it first, you know? And so that was hugely impactful. So let me share this with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen with you guys so you guys can see what we're talking about. Um, this is this is our we have a compilation of about 50 give or take sales calls that we've reviewed in like a group meeting just like this on Zoom over the past year year plus uh, for telesales and face to face. 
that um, we basically take a real life presentation and then I walk through critiquing that agent, providing them you know ways they can improve and also engaging the audience who's also listening live to help them improve. And with the beautiful thing about this, we require our agents who join, we don't require, we highly, highly recommend that our agents who join listen to three to five hours of these a day. What we want you guys to do is brainwash yourself. In other words, brainwash yourself and what it sounds like to be successful. You know, like uh, if you hear multiple calls a day where people are closing business, first of all, you're like, in your mind, you're like, hey, people are actually doing this, number one. And then number two, you're reinforcing the fundamentals that you're learning through the script with your one-on-one -on -one mentor, et cetera. So uh, this is something we have all of our agents do face-to-face -face or telesales. I point this out because you should be, you should have access to something like this, ladies and gentlemen, to help you reinforce your fundamentals wherever you're at. This is profoundly impactful. Mark, thanks for bringing that up because I've always yeah. said, man, just listen to other people sell. It just makes a huge, huge difference. So, so thank you for mentioning that. It's yeah, it's big, unbelievable. It's a big plus. Okay. So a couple of questions here. Do you have a daily target for dials? Ask April. Mm, not with dials. No, not with dials. It's really just about, I guess, more time duration, right? So, um, whether it's going to be a half day for me or a full day, it's really a bit just about staying there and dialing for that long. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. Because if I, if I go to like, for instance, I'll buy, I've been buying 40 to 75 leads. I, I could really get through 40 leads in like two hours. You know what I mean? Like if nobody's picking up the phone. So it's like, if I'm just doing that, then my day is over. So it's just like really just sticking to a time frame, um, but not really a dials. No. So let me make sure I'm I'm clear on this, Marks, so that everybody yeah. can understand. You care. It's less about the number of dials and more about using your time dialing and having a time goal of dialing and thus talking to people. Is that does that? Make yeah, sense? Co correct, correct. And as I'm getting better, it's more about it's really more about the apps that I put in. So my goal going forward, you know, hopefully I can start to have more of a full time schedule is two to three apps a day. That's that's really my goal. Yeah. So. Yeah. Just, just not stopping until I, I hit some sort of goal, essentially, is, is what I want to do. Now, for full-time agents, in case you guys are wondering, my recommendation is to be on the phone at a minimum of seven hours. Now, what do I define as being on the phone? I define that as you picking the phone up, whether headset or whatever, but you're either dialing or talking to somebody for seven hours. Your CRM, if you have one and you use one, should be able to track that, Okay. Um, seven is the bare minimum. It should be closer to eight, nine, or 10 if you're full-time. So that doesn't count your breaks you take, right? It doesn't count lunch. It's actually dial time and talk time. And there's a correlation between the amount of talk time you do and the amount of deals you write, okay? And that's the thing, because Mark may have days where he does five full pitches, closes three deals inside of like four hours, but only made 15 dials. Is that a failure? <laughs> no, he closed the deals. But likewise, he may have another day of five hours of calls and he dialed through 200 numbers. Is that a failure? But he didn't get a sale. That's not a failure either because he utilized that time to its maximal extent. What would be a failure if he had five hours of call time, he only was on the phone for two hours and then the other three, he was off just doing something else. That's when we look at this and say, hey, you need to fix this, right? So it's, it's are you actually leveraging all of your time to talk or attempt to talk to prospects. That's critical. All right, a couple of uh, other questions here. Um, too many distractions outside on the islands, beach. Yeah, you're, you're like in Hawaii, <laughs> very, probably very <laughs> distracting. It's true, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> probably used too to many it, distractions. Though. Yeah, right, a little bit. Right, sure. right so uh, wonderful. And I'm, I'm gonna get to these other questions you guys have posted down here um, in a minute again about to wrap this up. So um, Mark, any last words, maybe give us like two things, like pieces of advice as coming from a new agent, getting started in this business that you would give somebody uh, who is thinking about doing telesales, who's thinking about joining and selling insurance, what piece of advice or two would you give them to maximize their success? Hmm, yeah. I mean, just speaking from my personal experience, um, you know, like I wouldn't have been able to find or just know right away that, you know, Dave's agency was the one for me if I didn't go through all the BS first. And so if there's a way to like kind of sift through all of that without wasting money or time, I would just say, listen to people, uh, listen to people like Dave, you know, really get an idea of like what 
the agency is about before you dive into anything and see if it fits you before you waste your time. Um, and then once you find that, I would just say if there's people to lean on, um, really lean on them, from, not from just a training standpoint, but from just getting the fear out of your mind. Like for me, I had had some sales experience, um, but there it was something different when I went out there to buy my own leads and really something was on the line, right? Like I knew I could do it, but there's something about handing over my, my money and then now I got to perform. Um, which I love, like, I love that aspect of the business, but it was also, it also made me hesitant. And really Chris was the one that like helped talk me off the ledge. Um, and just said, Hey man, like, yeah, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna have to do it. Um, here's what I recommend. And, you know, just, just, he gave me the advice that made me feel confident in doing it because, you know, if I'm scared dialing, like you're just, you're screwed. And so, um, just lean on the people and, um, just, just do it. I would say is this is the last piece. You just got to do it. Um, you're really only going to learn when you're out there in the field, whether it's face to face or telesales, um, just, just do it and you'll learn on the way. And, um, it's not going to be perfect. Just, just right. get out there. Yeah. Right. And you mentioned Chris, you know, it's funny. Chris started a couple of years ago with me when he started, got a bunch of laps of selling over the phone, lots of, uh, t- uh tumult when his first year, year and a half. And it's funny, really, over the last six months, he has dialed in. He is more confident than ever. He is just absolutely crushing it uh, as a producer. Um, and, and that's the thing. And, and the, but it all started with him taking action, right? Because mm-hmm. we have to imperfectly take action. There's no perfection in this business. And you got to really like do it to get better. And, and really, one pit, tip of advice for all of you out there, it, it's as worse as it gets when you first start. The good news, it only gets better. <laughs> And that's because you're applying yourself and you're thinking through, okay, what did I do right? What can I do better, et cetera? Um, but so many people don't even get to that point. I mean, it's, it's shocking, Mark, you know, the amount of people that want to do this business, buy leads even, and then it's game day and they never even pick the phone up. It's a sad <laughs> state of affairs and so many people lose out in such a great opportunity, you know, so yeah. glad you're not a statistic on that, Mark. Thanks so much for <laughs> your business. Uh, I appreciate you tremendously, especially coming on here to kind of share your testimony. If y'all are interested in learning more about uh, joining us at DeFord Insurance Group, davidDeford.com forward slash FAQ. Read through that. You can see how it works face-to-face or over the phone and then learn how you can apply. Uh, we do an application interview process now because we're very um, particular with who we pick up and, and have joined because we want to work with people who are just as committed as us. So, uh, Mark, thank you very much.